Hey everyone, Two Angry Frogs here, and with Pandaria Remix, we have some new factions to grind out reputation for. There are nine factions total, with one being Horde only and one being Alliance only. So for the achievements and other items, we need to reach Exalted with eight of them. It's a great time to get Exalted with all of them, as the reputation gains in Remix are increased beyond what we would receive in normal gameplay. So today we're going to cover the first four factions and show you what is required to open the daily quest for each of these. If there are any farms you can do to speed up the reputation grind and the rewards you will receive when reaching Exalted. But before we begin, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you always know what we're up to next. Now, let's get into it. The Order of the Cloud Serpent is in the Jade Forest and is available as soon as you arrive in Jade Forest, regardless if you play through the Timeless Isles intro or choose to skip it. There are a few quests that you will need to complete prior to opening the daily quest. To start the introductory quest, we talk to Elder Anley at the Arboretum. She gives us the quest Wild Things, which sends us to talk to Instructor Tong. Instructor Tong will give us three quests to complete beating the odds in which we simply need to defeat some of the slither scale on the island, egg collection, which requires we collect stolen eggs from the Sora camp, and empty nests in which we need to return windward hatchlings to the nests in the area. Once we have completed these three quests, we get a follow-on quest choosing the one which lets us pick our own windward hatchling. You can pick between blue, green, and yellow. After choosing your hatchling, Instructor Tong will give you a quest to meet Instructor Skythorn back at the Arboretum, where your chosen egg will hatch during a small in-game cutscene. With this, you will now have access to the daily quests. Note that there are days where you will only be able to pick up a few quests at first, but when completing those, more dailies may become available for the day. Once reaching Revered Reputation with Order of the Cloud Serpent, you will also start to see dailies that require you to complete races and defeat rival Cloud Serpent trainers while riding on your chosen Cloud Serpent. You should be able to complete three to five dailies each day, and these are all located around the Arboretum area and reset each day with server resets. There is one farm that you can do for Order of the Cloud Serpent Reputation. All across the Windward Isle, you can randomly find onyx eggs. These can be found on the ground, behind trees, in bushy areas, and so on. They can be difficult to see due to the gray color, but turning in an onyx egg to Elder Onley rewards 750 reputation, so it can add up very fast if you find enough eggs. After reaching Exalted with Order of the Cloud Serpent, you will be given the quest Riding the Skies from Elder Onley. Once complete, you are rewarded with a Cloud Serpent mount that matches the color you chose when you selected your Windward Hatchling. You will also complete the Order of the Cloud Serpent Reputation achievement, which awards a Bronze Cache. Upon reaching level 20, you gain access to one of two factions depending on your character. If Horde, then you get access to the Dominance Offensive, and if Alliance, then Operation Shield Wall. Access to daily quests for both of these starts with the quest Meet the Scout given by Sunwalker Desco and Vell of Eternal Blossoms. You will see the marker for this quest as soon as you hit level 20. This quest will send you to either Scout Rokla in the Horde area or Scout Lena in the Alliance area of Karasang Wilds. For each faction, you need to complete a few quests which will ultimately lead to the Horde and Alliance constructing outpost bases in Karasang Wilds. For the Horde, you need to complete the Might of the Warchief, in which you defeat Alliance enemies and find Bloodguard Grotash and Grizzle Gearslip. Once Might of the Warchief is completed, you pick up the quest Domination Point from the Korkron Bodyguard to light the signal fire on the beach, which results in the Horde outpost being constructed. At this point, we now have access to the Dominance Offensive Daily Quest. For Alliance, you need to complete a King Among Men, in which you defeat Horde enemies and find Marshal Tropeman and Hilda Hornswaggle. Once a King Among Men is completed, you pick up the quest Lion's Landing from the 7th Legion Champion to use the Flare Launcher, which results in the Alliance outpost being constructed. At this point, you now have access to the Operation Shield Wall daily quest. For both Dominance Offensive and Operation Shield Wall, you can choose not to do the daily quest for the Reputation Grind. After you have completed the introductory quests and your respective outpost has been constructed, there are a series of storylines that you can complete that will get you all the way to Exalted. 
These storylines open at successive reputation levels and include what is listed here. On the Horde side, it is very important that if you start the Horde is family quest line, do not leave the game or Hearth out or anything else that would leave you outside of Kalimdor. Currently, there is no way to get back to Kalimdor to get back to the quest with a remix character, so you cannot finish the storyline or move on to the next one. And at this point, you will be left with only dailies. Blizzard is aware of the issue, but currently there is no fix for this. So assuming we will keep all of our reputation gains when our characters are transferred to retail servers, when we reach Exalted with Operation Shield Wall, we'll be able to buy the Grand Armored Griffin, and when reaching Exalted with the Dominance Offensive, we'll be able to buy the Grand Armored Wyvern. These are bought from the Alliance and Horde Quartermasters in Kerasane Wilds when we are transferred to Retail. You'll also complete the Dominance Offensive Reputation Achievement for Horde and the Operation Shield Wall Reputation Achievement for Alliance, which will award a Bronze Cash. Upon reaching level 25, you gain access to the August Celestials. Access to daily quests starts with the quest A Celestial Experience at the Temple of the White Tiger in Kunlai Summit. You will see the marker for this quest as soon as you hit level 25. A quick tip on this quest. When completing a Celestial Experience, go to the back of the circular area and stay in that general area only moving to avoid mechanics until the quest is complete. Each spirit will spawn in front of you, and at least on retail, if you move back to the NPCs and zoom, it could stick the progression of the quest and force you to drop the quest and restart it. After completing a celestial experience, pick up the quest A Witness to History, which has you witness the opening of the Gate of the August Celestials. Once the gate is open, you turn in the final quest to Madame V. Lu in the Shrine of Two Moons for Horde, or Matron V. Vin at the Shrine of the Seven Stars for Alliance, and now you will have access to the daily quest. August Celestial Daily Quest location changes with each daily reset and can be found in one of four areas, including the following. Temple of the White Tiger in Kunlai Summit, Cradle of Chi Ji in the Karasang Wilds, Temple of the Jade Serpent in the Jade Forest, and Temple of the Black Ox in Town Long Steps. For the August Celestials, as we mentioned for the prior factions, assuming the reputation carries over to retail, you can buy the Thundering August Cloud Serpent from Sage Whiteheart at the Shrine of the Seven Stars or Sage Lotus Bloom at the Shrine of the Two Moons. But as of now, we do not have concrete information from Blizzard on everything related to character transfers at the end of Remix. You would also be able to buy the August Celestials Tabard from the Quartermasters if you are at Exalted when we transfer. I have not seen this tabard for sale from the bronze vendors, but given all the various items, I could have easily missed it. At Exalted, you will also complete the August Celestial's Reputation Achievement, which awards a bronze cash. Upon reaching level 30, you gain access to the Shadow Pan. There are no prerequisite quests to open for the first set of dailies for the Shadow Pan. You simply need to go to the Shadow Pan Garrison and Town Long Steps and talk to Master Snowdrift. To open additional daily quest series, you can recruit companions at the Shadow Pan Garrison by picking up the Challenger's Ring Quests. The companions with additional daily quest series include Ban Bearheart, Ling of the Six Pools, and Master Snowdrift. Ban Bearheart will provide dailies related to the Mogu, Ling of the Six Pools has dailies for the Srothic, and Master Snowdrift's quest series cover the Yongle. As with other Pandaria factions, assuming the reputation carries over to retail, later you will be able to buy the Blue Shadow Pan Riding Tiger, the Green Shadow Pan Riding Tiger, and the Red Shadow Pan Riding Tiger, which are all in the style of the Siberian Tiger the Shadow Pan NPCs use. You'll be able to buy these from Quartermaster Rushi the Fox when your character is transferred to retail. At Exalted, you will complete the Shadow Pan Reputation Achievement, which awards a bronze cash. So before we wrap up the first four factions, let's talk about Lesser Charms and Zandalari. For all daily quests you complete each day, regardless of faction, you will receive Lesser Charms of Good Fortune. Rares and rare elites in the world can also drop Lesser Charms of Good Fortune. You can turn these into the main NPC, for example, Elder Onli at the Order of the Cloud Serpent, 
of any faction you choose and will receive additional reputation for every 10 coins you exchange. So this can be a great way to catch up on reputation for any factions that may be lagging. Xandalari Warbringers are open-world elite enemies that provide a significant boost to reputations. These are very high health and hard-hitting enemies, so typically defeated with a group of players, but they have a chance to drop stolen insignias from the various factions, such as Stolen Shadow Pan Insignia. Each insignia rewards 1,000 reputation for the faction they are associated with. Note that the spawn timers for the Warbringers appears to have been significantly reduced for Remix, so this does look to be a very viable farming method. With the buffs to Reputation Gains and Pandaria Remix, it's a great time to get exalted with all of the various factions. The achievements for Pandaria Factions are in a separate category in Remix, so we really do not know how this is going to work yet when our characters are transferred to Retail. However, maxing out Reputations does award Bronze, in some cases Mounts, and the possibility of getting additional rewards later, so we think it's worth the time to get these. And with that, we've covered the first four factions. In the next video, we'll wrap up with the Golden Lotus, Claxi, Sunreaver Onslaught, and Emperor Shao Ho. So look for that coming very soon. Let us know what you think down below in the comments. And don't forget to hit the join button and become a member for custom emotes, badges, and more. And everyone, have a great day.